I'm Mungo Dark Matter and this is Dark Matters. Today on Dark Matters we're going to discuss how to connect a wireless Xbox controller to a regular PC. Alright, to start out with you're going to need a wireless Xbox controller. This is an actual wireless Xbox controller that came with an Xbox. Uh, theoretically third-party Xbox controllers should work as well with the setup. And then you will need one of these over here which is a uh, wireless receiver for the Xbox controller and it has a USB connector that you just plug into your uh, computer. Now you, you're supposed to load the driver first uh, really uh, but you may need to make some adjustments as we will see. Um, I'll tell you the various problems I ran into getting this uh, set up to work and uh, hopefully it will be of help. You may run into similar problems or slightly different problems so hopefully the stuff I will tell you will help you get the wireless Xbox controller to work with your computer. If you have either a Belkin or a Razer keypad controller like this you may run into certain problems which we'll talk about later in this video as well. But this is just kind of a heads up for you. You can get a PC wireless gaming receiver off of eBay or Amazon.com, but there are a couple things to be aware of. First of all, a lot of the uh, gaming receivers may not be official Microsoft ones. They may be made by a third-party company, like a lot are made uh, by Chinese companies, and they're kind of generic game receivers that will work with the uh, Microsoft drivers uh, but you have to be aware of a few things. The first thing is is that generally the drivers that are included with the generic gaming receivers may have drivers that won't work with your operating system because they may be for older operating systems or 32-bit operating systems. If you have a more recent Windows 7 machine, it's a good chance that you're running 64-bit operating system and a 32-bit driver will not work with a 64-bit uh, operating system. So you need to go to this website right here and the link will be in the description of this video and uh, download the appropriate driver and if you look here you'll see we have Windows 64-bit selected, but you can get Windows 32-bit or Windows 7 32-bit, Windows Vista 32 or 64-bit, and XP 32 or 64-bit. So pretty much everything is available right here. So uh, once you get your gaming receiver, you're going to load the driver and then you're going to uh, plug in the receiver. Now it's supposed to be searching for the driver right here. See if it finds it. Ah, it says unidentified. So, even though we have the correct driver on here, because I have a uh, third party uh, gaming receiver, um, it didn't identify it correctly. So, we're going to go down here and click on the start menu and go to computer over to the right here and right click on that. And click on manage and we're going to bring up the computer management console and we're going to go to the device manager and here you can see under other devices the device is listed as unknown device I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go to update driver software 
I'm going to select down here the second choice browse my computer for driver software and then I'm going to pick the second choice on the next screen where it says let me pick from a list of device drivers on my machine because we've already got the device driver loaded it just doesn't recognize the device because it's not an official Microsoft device so it doesn't have whatever little bit of uh, code is in the chip and a Microsoft one that identifies it as a Microsoft um, device. We're going to go to Microsoft Common Controller for Window Class. And it's going to bring up a bunch of choices. Correct choice should be the top one, which has the date 8-13-2009 in this case. Um, we're going to select it and go next. And we're going to go yes on this warning here. Go ahead, let it install. We're going to go close. And now we have the controllers for, for uh, Xbox 360 controller for Windows there. So, now if we go down to um, all of our programs and look for Microsoft Xbox 360 Utilities, and we're going to click on this Microsoft Xbox 360 accessory status and you can see there are like a little four little quadrants right around here just like around the button on the um, Xbox um, controller and what I'm going to do is I need to assign the controller to the gaming receiver so that it recognizes it. All right, now to get the PC wireless gaming receiver to recognize the identity of the particular controller or controllers, if you're using more than one controller, you need to first press this button on the Xbox 360 controller and it will flash and then it will come up with one of these quadrants saying uh, the identity. There are basically four quadrant lights here and each one of those is an identity of a different controller. Then you're going to press the button on the gaming receiver and that light will start flashing. Now the next thing to do is there's a button right here that you hold down and you'll see that the light will start spinning around on the controller. I better press that again to make sure it's detecting. And that's how you get it to um, detect um, the particular controller. You may need to mess around with that a little bit to get it synced up. Sometimes you have to try a couple of times. I will uh, include a link to the uh, online instructions from Microsoft on how to do this. But this is basically the way you uh, set up on a controller even for an Xbox 360 itself. So if you've set up a controller for an Xbox 360 before, it's the same process basically. Except you wouldn't have this uh, separate remote uh, sensor. Okay, once I've got the controller assigned correctly to the gaming receiver, you'll see 
that the upper right go back over here. Once I've got the once I've got the controller assigned correctly to the uh, gaming receiver, you'll see the upper left quadrant on the uh, little connections window is lit up. And this corresponds to the one that's on the um, controller. So at this point so at this point so at this point everything should work correctly you can still run into some troubles though uh, for example Belkin and now Razor make this uh, keypad controller. Uh, Belkin calls it the N52TE and You can still run into problems, however. For instance, Belkin makes a... You can still run into problems, however. For instance, Belkin makes uh, a keypad controller called the N52TE, which uh, they've either sold or licensed to Razer. Razer now makes it and it's they call it the Nostromo uh, but it's a keypad controller uh, and you may have uh, problems with that so I've put a link in the um, description of this video that shows how to fix the problem basically what's going to happen is you're going to go down to start again you're going to go to computers you're going to go to manage and you may have to delete one of the entries under human interface devices which does not show up here uh, since we don't have the keypad loaded in here on this device but um you may have to remove one of those it goes through it in the link it will tell you where what one to delete another thing you could probably do is remove the device driver for the keypad controller um, test to make sure the Xbox controller works and then reinstall it because I noticed when I deleted the entry in here and after I rehooked up the keypad, um, both devices worked after that. So it is something that could be a problem. Uh, but if you don't use the keypad or don't have one hooked up, uh, you shouldn't have that problem then. All right, now the next key thing is, now even though it has this light in the quadrant, like I was saying, the keypad controller could interfere with it. Uh, there are probably other controllers that may interfere with the Xbox controller too on the PC. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is go into an actual game that uses the controller and actually test it in the game and see if the game recognizes the controller and you can use the controller that's the final acid test even though it shows that the communication link is working there may be problems still when you go into the program so we'll go into a program and uh, give it a test next
All right, this is the game Terra, and I can actually use the uh, Xbox controller to uh, move my character around. I can I can pan around the character, pan the camera angle, I can move, and uh, I can jump. I have a couple of spells here. That I can get. And that's all done with the Xbox controller here, so it appears to work. So that, that was the final test to make sure that the Xbox controller worked. Now you can also use a wired Xbox controller with your PC. But you'll need to download a different set of drivers, and I have included a link to the Microsoft site for those drivers as well, for the wired Xbox controller. So that will be in the description of this video. So there should be a few links in there to help you out, hopefully, and uh, make the whole process easier. I'm Mungo Dark Matter, and this has been Dark Matters. And whatever you do, enjoy technology.